I'm Dr. Alfredo Perfinetti, IFL Science, Senior Science Writer. And today we're talking to Dr. Brian May and Professor Dante Lauretta about their new book, Benno 3D, Anatomy of an Asteroid. It is a fantastic piece combining stereoscopic images uh, with the latest science uh, from NASA mission OSIRIS-REx. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you ended up working on uh, the book? I'm Don Taylor Retta. I'm the principal investigator of the OSIRIS-REx mission, which is a NASA-funded program to send a spacecraft to a near-Earth asteroid named Bennu and collect a sample to bring back to our planet for analysis in our laboratories. We launched in 2016, and I think that's when I was first introduced to Brian by a mutual colleague. We're both co-signers for an organization called Asteroid Day which is a United Nations sanctioned uh, event to raise awareness of asteroid science, the asteroid impact hazard. I thought, hey, cool, I'm talking to a childhood hero. I was a huge fan of Brian's music when I was a kid, still am today. And it was, I thought it was actually fake at the beginning. I thought I was being, you know, punked or whatever. This couldn't be really uh, the real Brian May. And I said, oh, thanks. Thanks for the warm wishes and, and you know, the successful journey. And then sure enough, as soon as we started returning data from the mission of images of the asteroid Bennu, I got another message from Brian. He says, hey, we see what you're putting out there on the internet. What do you think of a stereo view? And it really changed my whole perspective of the data. I was like, all of a sudden, a new dimension opened up. We we're looking at Bennu in 3D. And when you, when you take the book and you, and you browse through the images, you can really see how much more information is contained in a stereo image compared to a monochromatic image. I knew the value of the science was enormous. So I said, you know, we're really struggling, Brian, with our site selection. We had to find a safe location to collect the sample. And there was nothing that was obvious when we first arrived there. So I said, would you mind giving us a 3D view of these coordinates? And I think the next day it was in my inbox. And he, he sent me a really nice message saying how much it meant to him to be part of a program like this and that he really wanted to help. And I said, well, let me see if he means it. And I think I sent you a dozen coordinates or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then over the next week, they all started coming back. He and his collaborator, Claudia Manzoni, who they work really together to produce these stereo images, uh, just delivered. And it became, I, I think even at one point, Brian was like, I feel like we're making a book. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna keep that in, you know, I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket. We're kind of outsiders, Claudia and myself, we kind of trawl through any data we can find on the internet. And actually she does most of the trawling, she's brilliant at doing that. And we assembled stereo images, 3D images from all kinds of missions. And it was a kind of dream to me, because I, I, as I say, we're on the outside, I thought, wouldn't it be great to actually collaborate with some of these guys here, the real scientists? And suddenly I have this real scientist that, who's sending me stuff to do and it becomes like, it's kind of like a job because it was a, a lot of hours to put in, <laughs> but it's joy. It's just such a joy to, to work on these images and they, they're a bit rough to start with. It's hard, you have to align them up. You have a lot of problems with shadows, which I have to fix and it kind of can give you headaches, but once you get it fixed, it's beautiful. And you can enjoy looking at the surface of this planet as if you were there. So you're totally instinctive and that's what we were able, able to offer. But to me, it's a thrill. I mean, I'm, I'm, I get to hang out with real scientists. The book, of course, was another whole piece of demanding stuff because it's, it's fine having all this information and all this wonderful data, all these images, but to make it into a book is a huge mountain to climb. The whole thing is a long and arduous um, project. And finally, you have something which I'm incredibly proud of, I must say. It me too. So much to me. So Dad has become a great friend and I've learned so much in the process. I mean, I'm an amateur, like I say, and it's just the stuff I learned is incredible. When we first started sending text to Brian, it was written like you would write for a scientific journal. And one of the best contributions was Brian, like we said, we went through it word by word, but he, he really helped craft it into an accessible book for everybody. And he says he's an amateur, but he's really a storyteller, right? And he really brought that, how do we communicate this to a broad audience? Science is not for scientists. Science is, should be for everybody. Every, so it's no use putting out a book which people can't understand. Right. Why would you do that? So all the time in our journey, we're saying, well, are people going to get this? Are they going to actually understand it? 
To me, it's a little bit like making an album, you know, like a music album. You, it, want, it has to communicate, has to speak to you. It's, it's a very technically um, packed uh, tome. You know, it, it's an atlas of an astro uh, asteroid, if you like. But it all tells a story. And if you read it from cover to cover, you will get it. If you have an interest, you don't have to be a scientist to get it. What makes Bennu so interesting? What, why is such an interesting target for human exploration? We knew we wanted to go to a carbonaceous asteroid when we were first formulating this mission, now almost 20 years ago. And I've been interested in astrobiology and the origin of life. And I had been working with carbonaceous chondrites, which we have uh, one of the world's greatest collections around us here at the Natural History Museum and kind of ran into a, a limitation of the meteorite samples. Even when we get a sample right after it landed on Earth, uh, it's very quickly colonized by bacteria and contaminated. So when you're trying to understand, did amino acids that make our proteins come from these asteroids, the meteorites have lots of limitations. We needed to get to the surface of one of these and collect it and control the chain of evidence all the way into our laboratories. Bennu rose to the top of the list of our targets because it's in an accessible orbit. It's in a very Earth-like orbit. In fact, because of its orbit, it represents a potential hazard. And it is the most potentially hazardous asteroid in the solar system, with about a 0.05% chance of impacting the Earth. I like to take, tell everybody you don't need to go buy asteroid insurance or anything like that, because the impact, if it's going to happen, will be in the year 2182. Nevertheless, we need to understand these kinds of objects, how their orbits change with time, what their composition and physical properties are in the event that humanity does need to develop a mitigation mission to prevent this natural disaster from occurring. How having access to the work of Brian and Claudia um, helped shape the mission? What did it change once you had the 3D images? One of my favorite moments from the mission was I had a site selection board, right? A technical panel that was looking at the spacecraft and the surface and the science and everything. Could we get down and collect the material? And Brian had been working with Claudia producing these stereo images of, our, of potential sites, I think up to 50 uh, you had actually processed at the time. And Brian sent a case of his OWL stereo viewers to the team. And I opened up the box, these beautiful red uh, devices that you can put your cell phone on and you can see the stereo images right on there. And I passed them around and I said, we're just gonna flip through. And all of a sudden it became apparent the material that we could collect was in these really small, bowl-shaped craters, which the spacecraft team was not excited about sending the spacecraft into, but immediately I was like, we have to figure out how to get into one of these craters. And it was the stereo images that caused, that was my wow moment, although it was more like a, oh no, <laughs> kind of moment, but it was like, it became clear the challenge that we were facing. September 24th, 2023, bits of Bennu are landing on Earth. Amazing. Meanwhile, read all about it. That's right.